All right, everybody. Welcome to another, dare I say, earth-shattering edition of the My Colony podcast. Now, it's been a couple months since I've done an episode of the podcast, and so there's a few things we need to catch up on. And in particular, I'm going to be talking about the last two updates to My Colony 2, uh, version 0.20.0 and 0.21.0. And maybe some stuff in 19. I don't know if we touched on that before. But some of the biggest new features and the ones that we are really going to go over here today. First, I'm going to start with the uh, virtual reality stuff that is being added to My Colony 2, which is pretty exciting. Uh, Some of the universe stuff, which is coming, which is also exciting. And some of the stat logging stuff, which is also going to be exciting. So a lot of excitement. And uh, yeah, so let's just get into it. And let's start with VR. Now, you may or may not realize or remember that I added a, what I call, person mode to My Colony 2. And what that is, and you can see it right now in the interface up on the toolbar, there's a blue icon of a guy with like his arms and his legs spread out. If you click on that, you can add your yourself into your colony as a colonist, and then it gives you a like a first person view, or it's a third person view on a mobile or a desktop device, and a little uh, thumb pad in the corner that you can control and you can walk around your colony and see your colony as a colonist living there would, and walk around and interact with stuff, and it's really cool. Then um, I also recently about this time got a um, Oculus or a Meta Quest 2 headset and I thought well you know you can already uh, walk around in the colony in this person mode it'd be cool if you could like actually walk around in it in VR mode so I went ahead and added that to the game so if you have a VR headset like an Oculus Quest 2 fire up my colony go into the person mode and then click on the icon of the goggles and um That'll switch it to a first-person mode where you become your own colonist, and then you can move around anywhere you want in your colony. It's really cool. Um, it's hard to explain. You just got to see it for yourself. So this is something you could do with a VR headset. You can also do it if you have just a regular Google Cardboard viewer on an Android device. It doesn't work on the actual Android app, but it does work on the web app. So if you do have an Android and a Google Cardboard viewer, uh, put it in there. Go to the uh, My Colony 2 web app, and uh, you should see the option there. Um, If you are using a Google Cardboard viewer, you will need to have a Bluetooth gamepad to control your guy. But uh, a lot of people have that. So anyway, that's VR mode. There's going to be more coming to both VR mode and um, person mode in the future. For instance, I recently got on my um, MetaQuest... I think City Skylines VR Edition, and it's really cool. I want to make it so that you can play the entire My Colony 2 game in VR mode, uh, from starting the new city to building to doing the person mode stuff, 100% VR compatible. So that's going to be happening. Stay tuned for that in the future if you're into VR. And for the person mode, I there's a whole lot that can be done with this. This can unlock it being a whole game within a game. Uh, Some ideas I have, maybe you can go around, uh, do different quests with different NPCs, do stuff like go into some of the buildings. Uh, Your guy should be able to have his own inventory and uh, collect items. Maybe there'll be some kind of resources that you can only get as a person, which might be cool. And there's just so many things that can be added with this person mode. Um, so, and if you have ideas for it, feel free to go to the Ape Apps forums and leave suggestions for it, because I think there's going to be some really cool things coming with that in the future. Also, there's already, the game has the ability for units, like the infantry, to be able to shoot. Uh, there could be a cool little multiplayer aspect where you can, you know, kind of have like a first-person gun battle with your guys walking around the colony. Anyway, th- there's just, just a lot of options. It's a beginning mode on that. Uh, that... The person mode stuff isn't my top priority, but it's stuff that I'm going to improve a little bit with each update, so be on the lookout for it. But now on for some uh, other exciting things, and I want to talk about the new universe mode, which I just added to my colony version 0.21.0, which I just released on the day I'm recording this, so you might not have it on your device yet. But if you've gotten into the game statistics window for 
it's been in there for a long time now. There's been a universe button on the side, but when you click on it, it doesn't do anything. It just says universe coming soon. Well, soon is now. We now have the universe tab and it works. And when you go there, what you're going to see are two input boxes, one for a public key and one for a private key. And the private key is optional, but the public key is not if you want to be in a universe. And basically how this works, every game that is using the same public and private key combination will be entered into the same universe. And what the universe is, it's basically like the online version of My Colony 1. Yeah, all, but, it, but except it's more decentralized. The uh, online games kind of work in a peer-to-peer -peer network, so I don't have everything stored on my server somewhere. So, which is good, which means when I get hit by a car, inevitably someday, <laughs> the the universe system won't die. But, um, so yeah, if you and your friends want to play in the same online universe, but you want to be on different planets, universe mode is for you. If a bunch of people want to get together and organize a big community universe that people can join, that's cool too. Um, right now, the universe is just a uh, global chat kind of like my colony one has but coming soon there's going to be trading uh i th thought that now that my colony two actually has combat in it the universe can be used to actually facilitate war between planets it can be used to facilitate interplanetary governments because you might notice there's also a nations tab on that sidebar nations is something else that's going to be coming soon i had originally it was originally conceived to have multiple settlements from one planet form together and make a country. But, you know, why can't a country expand towards multiple planets? Well, I think it can. So that's probably going to be coming soon. One thing I will mention, I said uh, it's going to be trade routes and stuff. It's not going to be like the Galactic Board of Trade in My Colony 1. Now, why is that? To me, the Galactic Board of Trade has never really been that realistic, that you can just, you know, instantly wire a thousand starships across the galaxy. That doesn't make sense. But it does make sense to be able to build starships, load them with cargo and maybe people, and fly from one planet to another. And I think that is more how trade is going to work in my colony too. It's going to be, you have to establish routes from one planet to another. You're probably going to have to put up so many starships to operate this route, or rather... How many starships you have assigned to a route will depend on how much cargo and uh, passengers you can send from one planet to another. Uh, I'm still working it out of my head. The forms are open for suggestions, but um, it's going to work more like that and less like the My Colony 1 Galactic Board of Trade. So that's Universe. It's in there now. Um, check it out. I've... It, it works between multiple colonies and my own limited testing, but uh, it hasn't been available for wide release yet. So now that it's out there, I hope people try it out so I can get feedback and data on that to see how it works and so I can add more features to it going forward. Next, I want to talk about a new feature that you might see on the World tab, and that is stat reporting endpoints. Basically, how this works... Um, You've all seen the stats from My Colony 1. If you opt into that Colony website, you can get all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, just different statistics on your colony. There's kind of like leaderboards. You can compare your progress of your colony to others. Well, this is uh, going to be enabled in My Colony 2 through the stat reporting endpoints. Now, as of this recording, this just came out today, so there's no endpoints out there. Uh, except for my just little private one that I did some testing on. So this is something that's going to be rolling out as uh, people hopefully create stat reporting endpoints that you can put into your game. But um, if you're interested to know how this works, head over to the My Colony forums. I did a whole write-up on the uh, stat reporting stuff and how you can write your own API to collect statistic information. Basically how it works is every minute the um, your game will send... Uh, just detailed information about all the settlements in your world, stats in the world in general, the players that are connected to it. And um, anybody who wants to build a service to collect that data is free to do so, and they can do whatever they want with it. So you can make all sorts of things. Um, I think, you know, there's 
if if nothing cool ever gets made with it, I'm going to make something myself. But I'm going to let the community take a stab at it first. And if there's no takers, I'm going to make something cool. But uh, it it should be cool if somebody else did and I didn't have to. But there will be something eventually that you could put in the stat reporting endpoints. So, yes. Now, going forward, um, there's a lot of more con- content that needs to come to my colony too. It's obviously quite a bit. Not quite a bit, but it's lagging far behind the first My Colony right now. Uh, I think the first My Colony has about 600 buildings in the game. My Colony 2 has about... uh, It's less than 200. Now, keep in mind, My Colony 1 also has the Zolarg, the Alpha Draconians, and the LIS. So, um, the gap is as big as it seems, but it is missing a lot of content. That's going to be coming in the next several updates, but... One thing that has um, kind of been a bottleneck to adding more content into the game is that it's starting to take forever now for My Colony 2 to load on mobile. And in 0.21.0, I started introducing some changes that um, if they don't break anything and everything looks good, I'm going to be really rolling out in the next release. That should uh, speed the load times up quite a bit. And the reason for the issues is that right now, Every single data object in My Colony 2 is a um, separate file. And before I package it, I compress them all and combine them into one file. But um, what makes it really big and what makes it take really long to decompress, which is what's happening during that loading time, is that all the um, 3D models are also saved into that one big file. And... And it's kind of it's starting to take a lot of memory to compress this giant file that has all the game data in it. And um, on mobile devices where memory is limited or the CPU is not as fast as it would be on a desktop, this is really starting to take a long time to comp- decompress all this data. So what I'm going to be doing going forward, and I'm testing it on three of the buildings right now, is having the um, 3D model data separated from that big compressed file. And... Um, then the game will actually load the 3D models later on while it's running as they're needed. And the 3D models are not compressed. And so it's going to make the uh, download, like the Android APK file, larger. But it should improve loading times dramatically if I um, remove all the 3D models from the data, which is what I'll do if nothing ends up being broken from what I'm testing out in this release. So... Look forward to that. Let me know if you see any bugs in this release with buildings not showing up. The ones I'm testing it on are the, um, let me see here, the Tree Farm, the Galactic Stock Exchange, and the Uranium Enrichment Facility. So if those three buildings work good in this update, and there's no problems with, um, like, a big delay with them showing up when you try to build them, then I'm probably going to roll this out to pretty much everything. And that should make loading the game up at the beginning go pretty quick. So look forward to that. But that is the reason for people wondering why it takes so long, on, especially on mobile, for My Colony 2 to start up. It's because all the data for the game is compressed into one file, and when the game loads, it has to decompress everything, and the file is a lot larger than it needs to be because it also contains all the 3D models. So I'm going to be separating the 3D models out from that, and I think it should help quite a bit. So yeah, that is what's going on right now with My Colony 2. Um, I haven't done much, as you guys know, and as Some people are probably dismayed to uh, My Colony 1 in quite a bit. Um, I will keep giving it bug fix updates. I don't know that I'm going to spend much time adding content to it or features. I know I still get requests all the time to add more features to it, but I'm really focused on My Colony 2. That's where um, pretty much all my My Colony development is going in towards these days. So, yeah, if you want to see new stuff, you're better off suggesting it to My Colony 2, because that's where all my effort and all my focus is going to be going forward. But I will keep My Colony 1 maintained. I will keep the servers online. It's not going to be shut off or anything like that. And a lot of people love it. I love it too. It's not going anywhere. It's just not going to be getting any new uh, content. So anyway, that's what's up uh, for this episode of the podcast. Um, I hope you got some information out of it, and I want to thank you for listening, and you know what? I hope you have a good day. Stay tuned for more My Colony stuff.
to come in the future. And yeah, goodbye now.